In a world where the stock market falls, do not freak out. Do these three things. Yeah, that hurts. Let's let's talk about it. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to the Stock Advantage. My name is Darren, and today, real quick, I wanted to break down three things that you can do anytime the market is in a correction, like it is right now. Uh, it is the end of February, twenty twenty one. These market corrections do happen, uh, and the world doesn't come to an end every time they do. So hang on. Don't jump off the bridge. Um, don't sell your kidneys unless, well, no, that's a black market thing. We're not doing that. We're not selling kidneys. Uh, so anyways, and, and we shouldn't be selling stocks, but we'll get to that in a minute. So without further ado, let's jump into the three things you should be doing at this point. Number one, do nothing. That, that's a very valid option. If you're a long-term investor, one of the best things to do is do nothing at this point. Take a breath, turn off your notifications, turn off the news, um, because CNBC, um, CNN, Fox, all those guys are telling you that this is going to be the end. The crash is coming. The Fed is coming. Uh, the rates are coming. Everything's coming except for your money because it's going. If you need to, disconnect from all that and just say, hey, it is what it is. I'm not going to pay too close attention to my portfolio over the next couple weeks and uh, just ride it out. Number two is resist the urge to sell your stocks. We all hate red days and there's been a lot of them. It's been bloody. But let me take you back to how you make money in the stock market. You buy stocks low and you sell them high. When you sell your stocks in the middle of a um, market correction, a sector drop, whatever it may be, you're doing the exact opposite. You bought them higher and now you're selling them low. That is not the equation to make money. Just, just telling you. So resist that urge to sell the stocks. That's the emotions telling you, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut my losses at 20% and then I'm going to be perfect and I'm going to read this rebound and I'm going to jump back in after another 20% and then I'll have a nice 40% jump and I'm going to be even better than I was. You, that's very hard to do. And, and more than likely, if you're that scared that you're going to sell stocks for a major loss, you're going to be scared to get back in because you're going to think, well, is it going to keep dropping? What am I going to do? And then you'll start second guessing yourself. So make sure that you resist that urge to sell the stocks. It's okay if your initial plan to short swing a, a position for one week turns into three weeks, turns into four weeks. That's okay. You know, if it's a reputable company, you know, if it's if it's an Apple and you were like, oh, I was going to hold it for a week, but I guess I'll hold it for a month. It's not the end of the world. Um, I would rather hold a stock for a few extra weeks than take a L on it. Again, that's that's key. The key word there is reputable company. Penny stocks are dangerous in this kind of realm because this can straight shoot one in the foot and they may never come back. So make sure it's a reputable company if you're thinking about. If it's a sketchy company, it, you may be losing it anyway. So hey, whatever. Flip a coin, throw a dice, um, shoot a cow, what, whatever you got to do there. The last thing you can do is buy stocks. You know, there's a caveat here. Do not buy stocks with money you may need in the next short period the next couple months or weeks or six months whatever it may be if you need that money now or in the next three or four weeks don't buy stocks with it you know and, and somebody's like well i don't know if the market's going to keep going down well we don't know that you don't know if it's going to keep going down you don't know if it's going to come back tomorrow but what you do know is that stocks are a whole lot cheaper than they were a couple of weeks ago so to me, that's a deal. If you're in a long-term position or you're it's a solid company, it makes sense. The stock is cheaper than it was a couple of weeks ago. I have faith that eventually it'll rebound and there's an opportunity to make 10, 20, 30%. Depends on how bad this one got hit. A couple of keys with, with buying stocks uh, whenever the market's down. Diversify. Don't put 100% on GNUS. Put it on reputable companies. Put it in. Diversify across the sectors. You know, the the some of the biggest hit ones right now are the tech, the EV, the green energy sectors. So your opportunity to make money there is pretty solid. But also look at some of these other stocks, and we'll get to those in a minute. And then another key on the buying stocks now is to buy slowly. So just say you have $1,000 and you want to add $1,000 to your position of Apple um, because Apple is a pretty good deal right now. Instead of just saying, hey, I'm going to buy $1,000 today, you look at it as I'm going to position in. Maybe I'll buy 200 today and then I'll buy 200 for the next five days. And what you see there is, or what can happen is, yeah, you may miss a little opportunity if it bounces back pretty good tomorrow. But at the same time, if it drops another 5% tomorrow, 
then you can get that other $200 at 5% cheaper, or maybe you put 400 in then, but space out your, your buying into these positions. Don't buy in a full position size in one day, space it out over a week or two and see what the market's doing each day. And that, that can help you get a good average cost on a stock that you're wanting to put a thousand dollars more onto, but kind of put it in slowly to see how it's going to re how the market's reacting and make sure that you get the best deal you can. Okay, so last up here, a, a few stocks that are on my watch list specifically for right now, but uh, you know, these are always opportunities um, whenever the market drops. So the first one here is going to be TQQQ. Uh, and so this one is a triple leverage ETF that tracks the NASDAQ. Uh, currently, it's down 16% from highs. Uh, and so as the market recovers, this one is going to uh, come back up. I mean, eventually, right? Um, so this one's got pretty good upside. Uh, and I'm not going to go into super details on all these. I just want to lay out a few options for you. And the next one up here is SP <clears throat> SPXL. Uh, so that's a triple leverage ETF that tracks the S&P 500. Uh, it's down 8% from highs. Next up, we'll look at Square. Uh, and so Square is down 18% from highs. Um, this, this stock here is, uh, uh, it's got some good potential. I mean, it was just, at, it was in almost 280 not too long ago. Uh, and it's back down to 230. Really, um, really strong company there, I believe. So ARC is an ETF, uh, actively managed ETF. Uh, and so this one's ARC K, ARC Innovation. Uh, it's at currently $130 and it's down 18% from its highs. Next up, good old trusty Apple. Apple is down 11% from their latest highs. Next up, you got to throw a couple Bitcoin plays in here. So you got Mara. Uh, and so Mara, just, just, a, just a week and a half ago, was at almost $50 a share. And it's currently down 39%. Uh, and then on the flip side of that is Riot, which was at 80 and now it's trading at 43. So it's actually down 44%. Uh, and so if you look at the price of Bitcoin, this does not court. Usually these two run almost hand in hand with Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin hasn't fallen off this much. So, you know, these stocks are still impacted by the market. Uh, and so as I think these will recover pretty strong because Bitcoin is, is still holding its own in the, I think the mid to upper 40 thousands. Uh, and so, yeah, it's down, it's down 15, 18%, something like that, but these are down 35 and 40. Uh, and so I think these have a good opportunity to rebound pretty solid, um, whenever they do start to do that. Next one here is ELY or Callaway. Uh, so this is the golf company. Uh, so pretty solid company here. They're down 12% from highs. And one interesting thing here is they did just buy, uh, in the fall, they actually bought top golf as spring opens up and everything opens back up the economy. I think you'll see a lot from, from Callaway's. All right, next up J and J. So J and J it's, it's only down about 7% from its highs. Uh, but, uh, it's up a little bit in the after hours here. It did just get its single shot vaccine approved by the FDA. Uh, easily. So I think this one's probably going to see some, a pretty good jump. Uh, and, and again, it's just another solid company that's due for a, a good rebound. And the last one here is Boeing. Uh, Boeing is down 7%, ha had a pretty good rally up to 230. Uh, it's down now to the 212s. Uh, I thought this one would take a major hit after the engine, uh, explosion issue. Uh, but it took a small one. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Uh, but I, this one's got plenty of potential headed back up. It's down about 7%. So I just wanted to go over a few things, uh, a few of those with you today. This is, you know, for the future as well. I mean, this is not always the end of the world. You know, look at it as an opportunity, maybe to grow your patience, to, to figure out how to take emotions out of it. But do not overreact. Uh, and then look for opportunities to maybe add to positions as you go forward. So, And then there was just a couple examples at the end that you could look at. So that's all I've got for you today, guys. Just wanted to break that down for you real quick. And make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell. Link down below for Weeble for two free stocks. If you open an account and deposit $100. And uh, comment down below what uh, what you're looking at uh, during the uh, this latest drop. So, till next time, have a great day and God bless.